Hello everybody, Disciple here with Overwatch Curios. Now a little bit ago we made a video about the top 5 hardest heroes to play in Overwatch, and while some people disagreed and some people agreed with our list, it seemed like a pretty hot topic that people were interested in. And one of the most common questions asked about Overwatch by new players is, what are the easiest heroes to play? That seems simple enough, but it's actually a pretty loaded question and one we're going to try and answer today. There are some heroes that have a straightforward kit and are pretty easy to pick up, but then their skill caps scale really quickly when going beyond the basics. There are some with pretty confusing abilities and ultimates that require strict attention, but with some practice become second nature and seem even easier than the previous example. Today, I want to take a look at the top 5 easiest heroes to play, spanning both the pick up and play mentality, as well as the higher tier of that hero's abilities once you get to the top of the skill cap. Basically a balance between the two extremes. Just for clarity, easy doesn't equal bad or useless, and the people that play them aren't necessarily bad either. These are just the easiest heroes to play to get to a higher level. Now let's get started. D.Va is an aggressive flanking tank and bruiser that can be great at just about any tier of play. Her kit is very direct and focuses on getting right up in the enemy's face, doing some damage, throwing them off, and then being able to mitigate incoming fire and get out before things get too hairy. The breakdown of her kit is straightforward. You have short range rapid fire guns with infinite ammo that allow you to put close up pressure on a wide range of targets, especially backline healers and squishies, as well as tanks that take a lot of damage from your guns. They do quite a bit of damage up close, and the time saved by not having to reload them contributes to her DPS pretty directly. A variable time cooldown defense matrix for mitigating damage which blocks any projectiles in its conal range is great for reducing incoming damage to the team, D.Va herself, and eating nearly every ultimate in the entire game since most of them are projectiles themselves. And it takes a lot of timing to work with it, but once you're good at it, it's incredibly powerful. Now mech boost you have for getting in and out of combat, as well as knocking your enemies back and around while they're trying to aim or pull off their abilities. It's also really good for chasing down fleeing enemies. You then have your Q, which is a fire and forget massive explosion that clears areas and takes down just about anyone that isn't undercover, great for overtime pushes and combos with other heroes ultimates like Zarya or Reinhardt. So what makes D.Va easy to play is just the straightforward playstyle we talked about before. She's got great damage that doesn't take any real concentration or skill to pull off. Just get up close and open up in the target's general direction while melting heroes that are 200 HP or less with very little effort. Her boost can be mastered with a little bit of timing practice and is so multifaceted that using it becomes frequent and easy. You get in, you get out, you ram people off cliffs and while they're ulting, and your job is to flank and get into the enemy backline's face and disrupt as much as possible. Once the enemy team starts focusing you, you just have to back away with defense matrix holding off the incoming damage and boosting to safety. Even if you do get reduced to zero, you pop out of your mech and you're given sort of an extra life as Pilot Diva or Baby Diva. A small hitbox and surprisingly powerful pistol actually makes Baby Diva a force to be reckoned with and while she's fragile, she can dodge and get to cover pretty easily, which is just in time to call down another mech and repeat the process. So the actual reasons we're going to say she's pretty easy is that her abilities are very straightforward, she doesn't have to aim very hard with her guns when she's in her mech form, and in her pilot form, she can kind of just fire in the direction of the enemy team and hope to do enough damage to get her mech back, and she's probably the most forgiving hero in terms of overall health, where you can take a lot of damage if you're mispositioned and still either escape or just tank it up through your wide variety of abilities. Now, out of all the heroes, Lucio is by far the easiest to play, and it happens to be one of the best picks that you could make in almost any league or match type as well. First and foremost, his heals are passive, you literally just have to turn on the healing song and be within range of the team, and that's it. You can even boost up the heals with Amp It Up, which enhances the current song that you're playing to restore immense amounts of health to your team, or switch that over to the speed boost and get your team through a choke incredibly quickly. His wall riding used to be a much higher skill to master, but recently it's been buffed so to speak, or at least the skill floor has been lowered, so it's much more forgiving on the surface that you're on, and it gives you a speed buff as well while you are wall riding. So mobility isn't necessarily an issue for the healing DJ. 
His ultimate really couldn't be easier, and while it does require some timing, all you really have to do is get into the range of your team, press Q, and you give everyone a huge shield buff for a few seconds, allowing you to push, retreat, or survive the enemy wombo combos. All of these factors combine to make a super easy to play hero that synergizes well with any comp. His damage is even fairly decent if you can hit your targets, adding a bit of support to the overall elimination effectiveness of the team. His alternate fire knocks enemies back, interrupting an attack, and even removing threats by knocking them off cliffs and into deadly crossfire. Lucio's speed, constant contribution to the team, and overall simple kit design make him a must pick as well as a super easy hero to pick up and play. Now of course I've seen what a great Lucio can do, I've seen DSP Stanky and Grego do some quite incredible things on this hero, but you can probably argue that a bad Lucio is probably going to be a lot better than a bad Ana, since Ana is just a much higher skill cap hero to play, and Lucio is effective at pretty much any level. Anyway, up next is Winston, who's a fantastic tank choice for players who want to be able to easily defend the objective while not requiring pesky aiming to be a factor in their playstyle. Winston is a very versatile tank who is very effective at diving into enemy teams, but can also help protect his own team as well if they do need to have some sort of defensive posture. His shield is a placed item that forms a dome around the medium sized area, and it can be thrown down to protect allies from incoming fire, or to cordon off a turret or stationary defense area that might get wiped by heavy fire. Winston himself has a ton of HP, yet seems a bit squishier than the other tanks, and the shield helps balance this out quite a bit as well. His weapon is incredibly easy mode. The Tesla cannon fires in a small arc in front of Winston and latches onto your enemies in that area without the need to be very accurate, and you really don't have to aim at all, as long as you're facing in the general direction. Just wave it at them and you're bound to hit someone and take them down pretty quickly as long as you can stick on them. You have great mobility with your leap, allowing you to engage or disengage from fights very effectively just by pointing and clicking, much like D.Va does. Finally, his ultimate makes things even easier by increasing his hit points, melee damage, and jump damage, as well as knocking enemies back while he swings his arms around. Granted, it does remove the Tesla gun out of the equation, but it makes up for it in sheer overwhelming presence and in your face damage that will disrupt the enemy's push or hold, as well as healing you to 1000 HP no matter what health you started at. So you can go from 1 HP to 1000 at the click of a button, which makes him a lot more forgiving than a lot of other heroes who don't have a self heal or an invulnerability of some sort. There's really not a lot to say about Winston. He's great in dive comps and he's actually played competitively sometimes when you do need someone to dive in or potentially take out a sniper or a backline hero, but overall his kit is just so straightforward that pretty much anyone can pick him up and play if they want to be a tank. Next up, Bastion's kit is incredibly simple because he's focused on only one thing, which is deal as much damage as possible while also staying alive. This focus extends to his kit, which includes his recon form, which is great for moving around and doing damage while also healing when getting from point A to point B. While it's not his highest DPS, a mobile Bastion is still dangerous and very easy to use. But of course, the Bastion that you know is in sentry form, dealing massive amounts of damage with his stationary Gatling cannon, able to rip through armor, shields, and heroes alike, and even though he can't headshot anymore, he can still do almost unparalleled DPS. All you have to do is find a good spot and hold primary fire to make the enemy team scatter in every direction and look for the best way to kill you. In either form, Bastion can use his self repair to keep himself going and alive at any time, and while it's not the strongest heal in the game, it definitely keeps the player in the game very long and is easily supplemented with health packs or a healer on your team. Now, Bastion's ultimate is devastating and direct while also very easy to pilot. You transform into a tank, and you lob shells at the enemy until they fall down, but they have huge splash damage and huge damage themselves, meaning that you can probably take out an enemy team by yourself as long as you're clicking in the right direction. This works great by itself or in conjunction with other ultimates like Graviton Surge or Blizzard or Earth Shatter. The real challenge of his kit is being able to remain mobile enough to survive since the enemy team will likely be swapping to counter you, but overall he's just a super easy hero to play and get kills on so it's really not a surprise to see him on the list. If you want to do a truck ton of damage, get many kills, and probably a play of the game or two as easily as possible, you could probably pick Bastion. However. The absolute easiest kit in the game, but also one that does have a very high skill ceiling, is going to be Torbjorn. The Dwarven Engineer is built around ease of use and supplementing his primary tool, the automatic turret. 
You just have to place it down, build it up, and then chill while your turret does the work. It's got a decent rate of fire, a good health pool, and especially if the Torbjorn is babysitting it, and it auto locks on anything within sight, taking aiming out of the equation. Now if that's too easy and boring for you, you can step out from behind the turret and collect scrap, drop armor packs for your team, and fire either a long range molten shot of slag, or a close range shotgun burst right to the face, both of which are actually incredibly damaging and supplement the turret very well. In the past, Torbjorn used to have to use scrap for everything building turrets, upgrading turrets, dropping armor, but that's since been removed, so it's even easier to drop another turret after one gets blown up, making your downtime all but negligible. The only real downside is that he's got a pretty low health pool but a pretty big model, meaning that you can get blown up pretty easily, especially by anyone with a shotgun. But as long as you're around the team and giving yourself armor packs, you should be okay. His ultimate makes it even easier to work with the dwarf since it amplifies his health, the turret's health, and his overall damage output. You pop this and can go ham, or you sit back and swing your hammer at the turret to keep it alive and maximize its damage during your ult. There's really nothing complicated at all about Torbjorn, and while a high skilled player can play him a lot more effectively, he's super easy to pick up and play, and I'm sure none of you guys were surprised to see him. So there's our top 5. Now, whether you agree or disagree with our list, you can definitely see that these five heroes are a lot more simple than a lot of other heroes in the roster, meaning that they're perfect to pick up if you're new to the game or you're just super drunk. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.